Hey, everybody. Welcome to Flash Fried, the best. <laughs> I hate this show so much, man. <laughs> uh, what? Wait a minute now. Hold the fucking phone, bro. I've been getting shit for months saying I hate this show. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah. We love we love watching Paul hate the show. Now you hate it, too. I've hated it the whole time. Oh. But whatever. Well, it's good. At least you're being honest now. <laughs> but you know I mean, look, I'm not saying that I always hate it. It's just that. It's like I wake up on Wednesday. I'm like, ah, oh, let's do the. Oh, it's oh, fucking. It's Wednesday. It's fucking Wednesday. Oh, no, God. Ah. I know. I know, dude. News, I mean, look, news. I, I, I'm a regular news reader, but to me, I read the news in like little chunks, like 15, 20 minutes a day, maybe. I'll like mostly just scan headlines, which you learn are pretty fucking deceitful when you actually delve into the stories, but you know, headlines, Oh, that happened. huh? You know, I gotta be honest with you, teacher. On this show, you got to fucking dive into the news. What's that? Yes. I gotta be totally honest with you. I fucking love the show. Hard as rock. I think, I I think Scotty's being, uh, uh, like it sounds like he's kind of kayfabing a little bit, but I think he's being truthful. I think this. I think this show does make Scotty hard. I think he loves watching the world collapse in some ways. Uh, I, 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 was junky. I, I like. Uh, I know you guys aren't. I read the news all the time. I mean, but I'll tell you what. Honestly, even though I spend a lot of time, like probably at least a couple hours a day, just reading shit that's going on in the world and various articles and shit, that I, there's still shit that comes up on this show that I didn't hear about. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm a yeah, recover. So I'm a recovering news junkie. So I know I know yeah, the feel. First point, I had to stop because it was just like, ugh. You get, I don't know, it gets depressing after a while. It's more than that, dude. It had me living in a fucking dark black hole of fucking existential nihilism to the point where I didn't even want to get out of bed. <laughs> I had to stop. I don't, think, I don't think I ever took it to that level. I just kind of got to being like, man, things are kind of lame. There's a lot of. There's a lot of respects that's true because it's like you read it. And it's not like, like like what you're hearing like about what's going on in the world. It's about like the spin you see. It's about how deceitful headlines are. It's about you read the article and, and dive deep and like the headline actually is just it's total bullshit. Like so that's what, like, that's why when you sit like hear people like Trump like it's fake news, you kind of go like yeah. And sometimes especially with CNN, like CNN's one of the worst defenders of it. Honestly, like I'll read a headline, I'm like what? Then I'll go down and it's like oh it's bullshit. Yeah, that always sucks. I've pulled stories for this show before being like, ooh, that headline's juicy. And then I'll get into the, we'll get into the story and I'll be like, oh man, this isn't the story I fucking want. Yeah, but, well, they're, they're in the fucking eyeball business. They're just trying to sell you ads. So whatever they have to say to get that. And sometimes the story itself can just do that, like massive explosion in Beirut. And you're like, oh my God. Or the times it's all like, you'll never believe what Kim K did. And it's all like, she rocked this bikini. And you're just like, what the fuck? I'll, I'll, I'll click on that. <laughs> uh, I actually do have a Kim K story coming up, but whatever. Sick. We're not going to start that. We're going to start with black officer who defended George Floyd fired from police department. For just cause, right? Oh, for, oh, it was a good reason. A, a, a possibly misleading headline. What did he do? What was he fired so, for? He was no. He was fired for defending. This. Oh, he was fired for defending. Oh, okay. Because the department. Uh, has a policy against uh, social media posting, I guess. Um, well, I, I, I'd be willing to bet that, that that policy against social media posting is only really enforced when that social media posting is critical of the police department. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, the Greensboro Police Department terminated him because they claim all that his social media videos is a violation of department policy. He did not post anything negative on his channel. It was simply giving his side of the story as an officer. Uh, he and his family are currently seeking legal action. I think that's everything. Uh, yeah, good. I hope they I hope they actually get restitution because here's an example of what looks like um, possibly. And I don't know what he had to say about it. It says that he defended George Floyd, but uh, I think we can maybe hear. Yeah, somebody. can we hear? Y'all know, him. Y'all know him, Officer Williams, the one who did the uh, the viral um, George Floyd video, right? So, so that's not the video itself. That's him actually. Well, that's one. Of, that's one of the videos. So, being transparent with y'all for the last two months, my job put me on administrative leave. Oh, okay, it's not. To do so he's. This is just his like. Yeah, this is Tim kind of just more explaining the situation. Sure. Let's see if. 
have the actual video. I would love to. I would let. Yeah. Well, he might have removed it uh, when they were investigating him or something at their request or some shit. It says this has been removed. That's probably why this. Uh, why this this uh, this article doesn't link to it. Yeah. It like it's been. It sounds like it's being scrubbed from everywhere possible. Which is weird because you'd think it would have been if it was viral which it looks like it was. There's enough references to it here that looks like it was a viral video. Let me try and let me try a few more things. Cause I'm interested in this now. I want to hear what he said. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was he said? What was, what was so controversial? Uh, did he say like, you know, police department should be abolished or something. That's why they're mad. I mean, even, and even if he did, I don't think that's, I don't think there's anything he could have said unless it was like a direct threat to like, you know, like I will kill people or do something crazy like that. You should be fine with that. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like we can't we can't just sit and look for it all day. Like maybe somebody in the fucking chat will be able to find this and and link it so that we can maybe cover it in the next fr- uh, flash fried. But I, I got to be honest with you, I'm a cursory search is turning up nothing but dead links to this. That's crazy. So very all weird. Right. Well, Paul, I pulled this one for you. Okay. Smiling more often, even faking it, tricks your brain into feeling happy. So, <clears throat> I've actually, I've actually heard this before. This is, um, this is, uh, 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 we. This is a commonly taught top uh, 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 tactic in a certain kind of uh, psychological therapy. I'm trying to remember the name. Uh, it's cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, which shares a name with cock and ball torture. <laughs> Um, and probably shares about as much effectiveness at increasing your mental health as cock and ball torture does too. I already feel better now. Um, this is oh, horseshit. Um, there might be a study uh, of normally what we call like um, neurotypical people, and faking smiles might increase their uh, happiness as they go through their day. But for uh-huh. people, for people with major depressive symptoms or personality disorders and shit, this is just bullshit pop psychology nonsense. Can a smile truly make everything better? A new stuff. Don't feel like smiling. Faking one can have positive impacts. Researchers say smiling triggers certain facial muscles, which can trick your brain into feeling more positive. <laughs> I'm already feeling better. Thanks, article. Perception may be as important as reality. It's getting philosophical on us. Yeah, I basically just pulled this because I thought that uh, <laughs> Paul might have an interesting take on it. Uh, here's another fun one for you. I've been smiling through the whole article, and uh, I, I still think that the world is doomed. <laughs> <laughs> I still think that my life is ultimately meaningless and that I've done more harm than good on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> Small asteroid becomes closest ever seen passing Earth. NASA. An asteroid the size of an SUV. Ooh. Passed, uh, 1,830 miles uh, above Earth. The closest asteroid ever observed passing by our planet, NASA said Tuesday. It, uh, if it had been on a collision course with Earth, the asteroid named 2020 QG would likely not have caused any damage, instead disintegrating in the atmosphere, creating a fireball in the sky or a meteor, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, said in a statement. The asteroid, which is about 10 to 20 feet uh, long, passed above the southern Indian... Um, so the interesting thing about this asteroid, though, is that they literally didn't see it coming till it was here. Well, that's... I mean, the, its small size has a lot to do with that. Yeah, but um, it is it does show you how completely and utterly like exposed we are to this other existential threat that we don't really think about because we're piled up with self-created ones. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, dude, if 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 an asteroid the size of an SUV can get can creep this close to Earth and we barely catch it, what are we going to do if there's one that's the size of, you know, New York State that's on a trajectory? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, um, you know, the size thing is a factor, but my understanding is like even a fucking asteroid big enough to fucking do some serious damage could potentially sneak right up on us. Oh, like, we, we're not like we're not like monitoring the entirety of the sky at all times. No, I remember reading about this months and months ago, and, and I'm probably missing the quote, but it was a, some some tiny percentage of the sky is actually monitored, monitored for these things by our telescopes and our sensory equipment, and our satellites that are looking right. for them. Right. 
Well, it's like some 8% of the sky is actually being looked at at any given time on, on the planet Earth. So, yeah, we're, we're fucked if one of these, if, if something bigger than an SUV, something the size of a building or the size of a small city is on a trajectory with Earth, we're not going to see it until it's way too late for us to even try anything is kind of the lesson of this story. Like, we we don't even really have a plan now. There are people working on these, like, you know, plans to attach another spaceship to it and then use its engine to push the, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we, we read about that a few weeks back or months back, the the idea of, like, trying to change its course. It's like an unmanned uh, vehicle that lands on the asteroid and attaches itself to the asteroid and then fires its its thrusters in hopes of slightly changing the trajectory of the asteroid so it skips off our atmosphere but we're not even in a position where we could try that like if 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 astronomers say uh asteroid the size of new york city heading for earth it's gonna hit us like they won't even have time to get the shit together to launch something at it you know what i mean uh uh yeah, because let me tell you what's going to happen, dude. Aerosmith's going to write an amazing song. Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck are going to get on a fucking board, uh, a NASA shuttle. Oh, wait, they don't have one. Uh, well, they'll build, they'll build one really quick. Maybe the Russians will have one. And they're going to fucking drill into that thing and blow it up. And we're going to be saved. Maybe the Chinese will save us. <laughs> like, uh, like Chinese Will Smith to fucking go up yeah, there. Chinese Will Smith, save us, please. Not Will Smith. Uh, I, meant, I meant Bruce Willis. But Will Smith works, too. I yeah, could we'll, stay we'll away. The one Westerner they put on, they're like, he's good. <laughs> Just to hear you breathing. You're so fucked, man. <laughs> Watch on. you smile while you are sleeping. Liv Tyler's crying a single tear because her dad's not coming home. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna go like that. We're all we're all dead. <laughs> we're all fucked. <laughs> no, dude, it, it, it's fucked. The way humanity is going, like, like even if they got the mission launched, dude, they go, they approach the asteroid, they crash into it, it just, they just blow up, and at the end of it, yep. like, uh, Alpha Team, are you there? <laughs> oh, yeah. we're fucked. The, on, the only thing that changed is that we've added the mass of a couple of astronaut corpses and a spaceship <laughs> to the to the asteroid, and it hits that yeah, much the harder. Start, like coming towards us, and the U.S. government's like, fuck. Yeah. So we, I guess we got to do it giant fucking hole opens up in the middle of Wyoming. A fucking laser comes out, blows the asteroid up. Yeah. The government's just like, forget we have that. It's like, what? What? Uh-huh. It's like, all right, we got to come clean. We're deep impact. We're not Armageddon. I know. Uh, gun enthusiast. This is a positivity story, by the way. Oh, uh, gun enthusiast know. celebrates a man who shot himself in, their, in, his, in the balls as their king. I mean, look. He's got a fucking hammerless, uh, looks like 357 or fucking 38 special. And he's got a fucking semi automatic point on his dick. Explain, is, explain to them, Scotty, what, what hammerless means for those not in the gun know. Like, like, right, right. Uh, a lot of revolvers, like you clock, like it's like a double action. You have to pull the trigger and you got to clock the hammer. You know, right, like, you got to pull like, the hammer back. This, this, this is a semi automatic revolver. It'll fire yeah, as fast. Cool. The cylinder rotates every time the trigger is pulled without the hammer being cocked. So you can just pull the trigger yeah. as fast as you can and empty the yeah, chamber. A little one he's got there is like a defense. Looks like a little defense. Like you keep that in a purse or somewhere. You can pull it out quick. And kill it's just it. a nine millimeter or something that he's got over there. Like a. Uh, I don't know what the I don't, I don't know what the caliber is. I'm just guessing. But that like those little ones are usually like 38 special. But the, the, yeah, the, the 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 revolver's a 38, and the other one looks like a nine to me. But I don't know. I'm not a huge gun guy. Back in May, we wrote about a group of gun enthusiasts who love taking pictures of loaded weapons pointed at their dicks. Wait, what? <laughs> so this is... I ain't pointing anything at my fucking dick, dude. Oh, you guys, guys haven't heard of this? No fucking way where I point a fucking gun at my dick. Like, what? And then he has his fucking finger on the fucking trigger, dude. Like, what is this guy trying to fucking prove? So, so this... Another, another... Like, like, like I've heard about this, actually. I, I read about this weeks ago when it started happening. It's it's not a huge movement. So don't think that there are like thousands of dudes around the planet doing this. But it became popular as a way to troll gun safety and anti-gun people who say that guns are not safe for people to have in their homes because they get discharged and people don't have good gun discipline and all that shit. This was com- this the people came up with this as a way to troll those people because if you'll notice not only are they pointing these guns at their cocks but nobody is observing trigger discipline while doing so they've got their fingers through the fucking trigger guard and across that trigger 
And that's like the first thing they treat you at gun safety is you don't put your you don't point that gun at anything that you don't intend to kill. Like that's gun safety. Number one, never point a weapon at anything that you do not intend to kill. And so they're trolling with it. They're showing like, oh, guns are safe. Look at this. I'll put my finger through the trigger and pull the fucking put it right up against my nuts. And some fucking idiot shot himself. And the guys that were engaging this are like our hero. That's right. You show him, buddy. So a member of a Facebook group dedicated <laughs> group dedicated to taking pictures of loaded weapons pointed their dicks finally shot himself in the balls. <laughs> According to bloody pictures and video, so basically their movement <laughs> immediately they fucking finally one of them just ended up shooting themselves in the fucking dick because what did you think was going to happen? And um, <laughs> so according to bloody pictures and video he posts on social media, oh my god! And the why would you post that? An Imperial County Sheriff's Office, which confirmed the incident to motherboard. Rather than stepping back and starting to question whether the practice is wise, the group made him an administrator and are now celebrating him as their king. (laughs) On August 11th, these are people with some weird shoot myself in the dick fetish, okay? This is not even, this is some psychosexual bullshit. Yeah, there's something else going on here for sure, but... Um, the the, look. Oh my god. Look at the name of the fucking group loaded guns pointed at venus <laughs> that's the name of the group there's a that's a group loaded gun pointed at venus hey boys i might have fucked up the man who shot himself in the balls wrote <laughs> above a picture of his naked leg and spattered blood on the carpet on this floor a towel is stuffed between his legs and a printed out copy of the constitution is crumpled on the edge of the photo <laughs> <laughs> for this reason but like these are the people that are like yeah gun safety we're the most safe gun owners possible it's like and then you shot yourself in the balls like you are a refutation of your own position so thoroughly like why shouldn't it, uh, average retards own guns here's why yeah, it, <laughs> was, it gets funnier the guy posted sorry go. their fucking dick the guy posted through the incident as he bled, God's caliber 45 went through my scrotum, mattress, box spring, and floor, he wrote. Originally, the man thought he just grazed his balls, but a subsequent hospital visit told a different story. In the last public post from the man, he's in a green hospital gown on a gurney. A pink mask is draped across his face, and he's pointing his finger at his crotch like a gun. Turns out it wasn't a graze. The round went right the fuck through me. He posted, what I thought were two graze wounds turned out to be an entrance and exit wound. Oh, my well, only maybe that, maybe that smiling article is right. I'm I'm feeling happier. My <laughs> only regret with this story is that he didn't hit a nut on his way through. You know what I mean? Because it sounds like all he did was just puncture his scrotum, yeah, which fucking lucky, which dude. means this dude will probably after getting sewn up and shit be able to reproduce still, which is like, man, we were so close to taking him out of the gene pool. So fucking close. Oh, man. Well, I hope that this guns pointed at Venus group keeps doing it. I hope they get more members and I hope that people continue to shoot themselves in the balls. Um, the less children that these the fucking our country is in fucking trouble, dude. When you have people that have a group dedicated to pointing guns at their dicks, dude, uh, what's next point the gun at your head. I mean, up the ante, point the gun in your head, put the gun in your mouth movement. Now put the gun in your mouth and pull the trigger movement. That's the, that's the one sweep of the nation right now. This is about as close as we're going to get to a national sterilization policy on people with Liberty Eagle leg tats. Okay. So let's just let them do it. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Shoot your dick off to own. The <laughs> this is a great idea, guys. Keep all the way a conservative could own me. There's only one way. If he fucking put a gun in his dick and blew his balls off he did that i'd have nothing to say if you've got an e pluribus unum liberty eagle leg tat you need to join the loaded gun pointed at venus group right away and start doing this please uh, get rid of the fucking uh the snake on the the, the libertarian flag kind of bullshit yeah. and just have a severed dick you oh know, yeah shot off and just don't like, tread on me know. and it's a it's the it's don't, do it don't tread on me but instead of a snake it's a cock yeah you know what I mean? Severed, and balls. Unsevered cock. I love it. Keep doing yeah. it, guys. You're, you're doing you're doing the Lord's work. 
Yeah, man. I'll bigger caliber what. guns. Yeah, us. Bigger Fuck. caliber guns. That's what I want to see next. I want to see a 50 cal. I want to see somebody get a Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle and point that shit at their fucking nuts and hook their toe through the fucking trigger guard. I don't know how the fuck some. <laughs> well, they need to go to the next. Fuck that. I want to see some motherfucker shoot himself in the fucking crotch with a cannon, dude. I just yeah. want to get an old. I want to see that someone shoot themselves in the crotch with a rail gun, dude. There you that go. Just just take one of those old Civil War cannons, turn it upright, put a cannonball in it, straddle it and drape your nuts into the hole and then light that fuse behind you and fucking post that on, on social media. I'm ready, man. Show us how safe it all is. Yeah, it's my right to bear arms. Marijuana vending machines now available in Colorado with more to follow. Fuck yes, dude. <laughs> the people, the people cry out for marijuana vending machines, dude. Go to the conservative uh, viewpoint. Oh, settle down now. Stupid ass, straight edge, com- bastard ass, non druggy conservatives. Fuck you. This is the future. Uh- Weed lovers in Colorado can now get their favorite products more easily after the state welcomed the first marijuana vending machines. Located in Pueblo, the machines can accommodate up to 2,000 cannabis products each. Boys, I think we need to move to Pueblo, Colorado. I think the show needs to pull up stakes and move to Pueblo, (laughs) Colorado. In an era where contactless purchasing is becoming uh, more popular by the day, the Strawberry Fields Cannabis Dispensary in Colorado has launched four pot vending machines to ensure consumers get their products without seeing a human face. Oh, Fuck. So yes. Thank you. No more, no more bud tender bros. No more fucking bullshit. Just let me walk up and get my fucking pack of pre-rolls from a vending machine. Oh, yeah. I know. Dude. That sounds fucking great. Oh. Especially if you're fucking rush dude you don't want to deal with somebody it's like yeah there's a little vending machine right there oh my god no more what's that man this strain will make you feel loopy as hell man and look at the crystals like i i appreciate there being people out there that know about weed and when i want that curated experience i'll go get it but if it's three in the morning and I, i'm out of weed i could just go to a vending machine and get six pre-rolls and go home and stay yeah, high i think that's being this this uh the dispensary paul so i think you they're inside yeah, they're inside it, I believe. Oh, fuck this shit, man. We need 24 7. All right. It's still good, though. I got to tell you guys, man, I do yeah, not, you know, I do so not think that Colorado would be the greatest place for the podcast to be situated in terms of the type of stuff the podcast needs. But every time I hear a story about Colorado and weed, it gets a check mark next to it, man. <laughs> it's starting to, <laughs> it's starting to, like, they're also, they've also decriminalized psilocybin in, in Colorado and are, mo- and are pushing towards legalization of it. Well, like, yeah. I'm not sure about the rest of the state. It's, um, it's starting to, it's starting to check all my boxes. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Colorado's starting to look dope. <laughs> uh, yeah, so apparently it's easy checkout. Uh, wait, what does this say? Uh, blah, blah, blah. They're experienced cannabis customers who don't necessarily need that one-on-one interaction with a bud tender, of course. They know what they want before they walk in. They're ready to go in and go out. By doing this, we're giving uh, more time back to people who uh, do need hand-holding and want that education from a live person. With COVID and social distancing and contactless, definitely we have an appeal there as well. When I'm, living, when I'm living in a legal state, and you guys know this about me, this is my interaction with a bud tender. Do you guys have Blue Dream? If yes, purchase Blue Dream. If no, purchase whatever closest to Blue Dream there is. You know what I mean? If I could just have a fucking vending machine that's got blue dream in it or whatever the closest equivalent is why would i ever need a bud tender you yeah. know what i mean like i'm not one of these dudes that's constantly like i know enough about weed to know what i want so if i want to get shatter i can look at shatter and know it's good shatter if i want to get an indica i know all i know a list of indicas that are really good and i can look in this fucking machine and pick the one that i want you know what i mean i, I don't necessarily need all the time that curated experience and i gotta be honest with you guys even at a good one and we lived in Washington for a while, so you guys can either back me up or con- be contrary on this. Even at a really good place that had good, non-annoying bud tenders, I still found the interaction annoying like 90% of the time. Because I, I mean, felt like... I feel like customer service shit in general, so... I mean, some yeah, most of it for me. Like, there's some of it that having a person there I think is good, but very few. And the bud tenders... 
if I really need to know something, it's good to have someone who's knowledgeable. I don't fucking deny that. But uh, usually I'm just like, <laughs> usually my, my, my thing about, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have like as much of a go-to or I'm like blue dream, please. Or some shit. But like, I'll just look at a menu and be like this, 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 and this, you know, or right. I'll ask them like, what's good. Give me that. You know? <laughs> right. You know I mean, it was good for me. Honestly, it was when we had uh, one dude that basically would just curate it for us. And it was just, uh, the understanding was we'd walk in there, he'd get all the shit. He would check us out. He would give us a fucking discount, a med- his medical discount, basically, and that was it. So we, we saved money, and it was great. Yeah, I mean it's it's good to it's good to like have the option of that curated experience. But for a dude like me that's been smoking since he's fucking fifteen years old, I know what I want. Like I I I just don't need it. Like as long as the product that comes out of them is quality, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think a legal state's going to be quality anyway. So yeah, that's true. So. Bill Clinton mocked for lecturing Trump amid photo of him getting massaged from Epstein accuser. Yeah, no shit. Shut up, Bill. Yeah. It's time um, for you to it's time for you to disappear into your Dracula coffin. TJ, TJ, give me a massage, TJ. I need one from you. I need my massage. Look, uh, President Bill Clinton. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Scotty. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. President Bill Clinton used his Democratic National Convention speech Tuesday to lecture President Trump on decorum, drawing charges of hypocrisy even before a photo of the former Democratic president with an Epstein accuser went viral. At a time like this, the Oval Office should be a command center, Mr. Clinton said in his remote speech. Instead, it's a storm center. There's only chaos. Just one thing never that never changes, uh, his determination to deny responsibility and shift the blame. The buck never stops there. Leading off the mockery was late show host Stephen Colbert, who alluded to Mr. Clinton's Oval Office affair with uh, then White House intern Monica Lewinsky. All right, that's true, and that's a good point, Col- Mr. Colbert replied, but I don't think Bill Clinton gets to lecture anyone about <laughs> what should be happening in the Oval Office. Uh, I want to say this again, TJ. It did not have sexual relations with that woman. See, I mean, I can understand the I can understand the the Epstein victim thing, but like playing the Lewinsky card is pretty lame. I mean, that's like, bullshit. Got his dick sucked in the White House office. That's not the same as the kind of shit Trump is doing in there. No, no, it but isn't. Lied about it. I mean, but if Bill Clinton was like, "You got me," you, you like, yes, you got to take into account this is a late night host joke, so it's not right. necessarily they, meant. They, they still love the Lewinsky jokes, even all these years. right. Old. Bill Clinton did more than that. I mean, Bill Clinton uh, sued to try to make it so he couldn't even be challenged in court. Like, see, there's a lawsuit, and he went to the, all the way to the Supreme Court saying, hey, I shouldn't even be, I'm the president. So he kind of did something that that's true with Trump. So there's a, there is a fair amount of hypocrisy for what Bill Clinton has uh, treated Trump. Now, doesn't that seem like Frank, the Lewinsky thing is not like the fucking oh the Epstein shit is the real stickler here. The fact that they the the fact that he's lecturing on decorum and sexual impropriety and this that and the other thing, and he's the president that was on Epstein's jet and Epstein had paintings of in his house and shit. Like if Jeffrey Epstein had a painting of you in his house on Pedo Island, there's a good chance you fucked an underage girl. You know what I mean? So he needs to shut the fuck up and disappear back into his fucking Dracula coffin, cross his arms over and go into torpor for the next two centuries until he can come back out. and Nobody remembers who he is and make another run at it. Because like he's he's, uh, the UK Daily Mail ran a photo (coughs) showing Mr. Clinton receiving a neck massage from uh, Shantae Davis or Davies. Uh, then 22, who was accused the late Jeffrey Epstein of raping her. Mr. Clinton has come under fire for his friendship with Epstein, a convicted sex offender. Can I see the photo? Or is it, is it, there it is. Uh, cool. uh, this is a photo of uh, one of Epstein's like trafficking victims or whatever the fuck, or at least a rape victim. And, and uh, uh, an alleged uh, victim right. of Jeffrey Epstein's trafficking, to be fair. But the, this is one of the women that is has come out and said that Epstein uh, found her at a very young age and basically pimped her out to powerful people. Now, um, this woman does not say that Clinton uh, did anything sexual with her. I feel like that should be pointed out. But here he is getting a fucking massage from this Epstein victim with, you know, with Epstein Maybe not present in this very room at the time, but like present in on this trip. Well, it was a trip that Bill Clinton took with um, Epstein. Is it the one that went to Africa? 
Uh, I forget what this is. Okay, we were um, what? you never before seen photographs of Bill Clinton while he grins with pleasure as he enjoys an intimate neck massage with a young. Okay, okay. Guy. Number number one, the neck massage he's receiving is no more intimate than any other yeah. neck massage. This is how a masseuse is going to give you a neck massage. Number one, number two, Bill Clinton. If Bill Clinton had fucked this chick when she was fourteen and had been fucking her since she was fourteen, you can tell this is not a a, a secret photo. There's no way this picture gets taken. He he allowed this picture to get taken because what it shows is pretty fucking innocuous. It's a girl dressed in what looked like masseuse garments, giving him a totally non-sexual massage as he sits there. The implication here is that this is one of the women that has accused Jeffrey Epstein of trafficking her at a young age to powerful people. And it's just another connection of Bill Clinton to this dude. Like how many like. How many connections can you make to a person and how many how many little pieces of circumstantial evidence can connect a person so closely to a person whose entire existence was based around trafficking young girls to powerful people before you raise an eyebrow? There's a painting of him in the fucking house. We know for a fact he's been to Pedo yeah, Island. wearing a dress, too. Yeah, yeah. That We know for a fact he's been to Pedophile Island numerous times. He's ridden on fucking Jeffrey Epstein's planes numerous times. Like, where does it like at what point do we call a spade a spade? Of course, there's not going to be a completely fucking voluntary photo of Bill Clinton smiling at the camera and giving finger guns while he gets blown by a 13 year old or some shit. You know what I mean? If that exists, it's on an Epstein server somewhere in the hands of the FBI, you know, but I, I don't know. It's just like and Clinton's not the only one implicated in this. Trump knew this fucking guy forever. Like all these politicians all these old ass fucking politicians and these names that have come out, come out. These are like American royalty. Clinton yeah, and, uh, to go beyond even just this like scandal angle, like just even if there was none of this going on and none of this had come to fucking light or anything, I still think Bill Clinton has no business playing as large a role in this fucking convention as he he's accused. He's accused of he's accused of rape, not once, not twice, but by a gaggle of women. Right. But even just politically, like it's like his time is like so done, you know, like let's move on. He he is he exists for people that are about 10, 15 years older than you and I who really thought Bill Clinton was the bee's knees. And that's all they see when they see him is they get Bill out there and they think of things was good. They think of good old energized left leaning Bill Clinton who beat George H.W. Bush midstream after a disastrous invasion of Iraq. Um, and that's and that's all they see. They don't they don't actually see the damage he did as a president. They don't see his impropriety. They don't see his connection to the very corporations that are bleeding this country dry. They don't see his status as a fucking complete and utter center right corporatist fucking politician that's been foisted on the left over and over and over again. You know, to them, it's going to be the same way with Obama for fucking three, four decades, assuming we all survive that long. There are going to be people that see Barack Obama come out and go like, oh, man, things were so much better during him. He advanced everything. He built on what George H.W. Bush did and advanced everything. He yeah. built on the military campaign. He built on the drone strikes. He built on the get corporate giveaways to corporations. You know what, Paul? At least he closed Gitmo, though. He, we all can say and all agree right now he did that. Oh wait! Oh wait! No, he didn't. Oh well, but he did stop. He did. Oh, my face. He did stop extraordinary re- rendition though, and and CIA CIA black st- uh, sites where they take people to disappear them forever though. He did stop. Yeah. Oh wait! No, he didn't. Oh shit! He actually he actually ramped up their use. Yeah, because remember, uh, and actually they used to do that in Syria. Remember that country that we uh, all hated? Oh, they're bad. Syria. Oh, they did. Oh. They, they, they do it everywhere. They they did it in Syria. They did it in Turkey. They have these sites in, in Europe, all over the fucking globe. I mean, look, the authoritarian governments of the world just realize how powerless uh, anyone is to really stop them. Look, Saudi Arabia, they killed someone in their embassy. Oh, the guy's dead. Meh. Oh, well, well nothing we can do. Hey, you know how much oil we have? Do you, do you know who we are? Fuck him. Yeah, fuck him. He's dead. Oh, or, I mean, of course, I'm not going to say that. Oh, well, we, we don't know what happened to him. He left here. We, we escorted him out. And he was fine. <laughs> you know, give me a fucking break. He uh, looked totally different and changed his shoes and stuff when he was in there, but we escorted him right on out. Look, have a nice life. 
<laughs> never see your family again. Even if every yeah, sexual somewhere outside of the embassy, we don't even know. Even if every uh, allegation of sexual impropriety or assault against Clinton is completely fabricated, he's still a piece of shit who uh, broke his dick off in the ass of this fucking country, and nobody should look at him and see the good times. And Paul, remember the only scandals they went after him were like a real estate deal gone bad. Wasn't any of the other shit he did. It wasn't the fact that like he he literally had a bunch of conservatives in administra- his administration. Oh, what's that guy like? Like uh, what? Oh, I think it's Secretary of Treasury. I forget the guy's name. And they fucking derailed. Alan Greenspan. Alan Greenspan. About Greenspan, right? Uh, not Greenspan. He's a, he was a chairman uh, of the of the Federal Reserve. He was pretty fucking. I mean, he was like a Ayn Rand butt boy. No, it was, I think. It's, uh, you know, let me look his fucking name up because I'll, I'll just. I think uh, I don't want to say the wrong fucking person, but uh, there's a fucking guy that. Uh, he's been in a ton of administrations. He was in the Obama administration too. I think this is his name, but let me make sure. Is it Mnuchin? Um, I think it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's Lawrence Summers. This Summers. guy Galen told me about actually. Larry, Larry Summers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry Summers was like, um, he's he's a huge neocon, like a gigantic yeah. fucking neocon. He was the dean of Harvard. Yes. Um. Yeah. Larry Summers is a piece of shit. Like a total and a complete warmongering piece of shit served as Bill Clinton's uh, and helped to make sure that derivatives were deregulated, which then led in 2008 to a massive recession. Oh, man. But thanks, Bill Clinton. You did a good job. That's why a lot of people said, hey, Bill Clinton was responsible a lot. Not, it wasn't just Bush for this fucking housing crash because look, Bush had his fair share of shit he did, too. But Clinton's one of the one that really kicked things off or was like, oh, wait. We can make more money by prepackaging this real estate debt. Hope it doesn't go bad. Oops, it did. <laughs> no, we'll, we're still facing another bubble. Not, not in the real estate uh, market. Well, we will, we will face that soon enough, anyways. Uh, but with collateralized uh, debt obligations. Oh right. my god! There's something. I mean, like right now, it's just a matter of which bubble's going to pop first. I mean, <laughs> and guess who's going to be left holding the bag? The fucking rich elites, right? <laughs> They're going to take responsibility for it. Good one. That's going to be the people. Uh huh. Um, House Democrats will vote on giving Postal Service a twenty-five billion dollar oh. boost. Oh, right. the, oh. the House is set to return on Saturday to vote on legislation related to the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, House Democratic leaders announced Monday to providing the financially strapped agency with twenty-five billion in funding, despite White House objections. The bill is still being finalized, top Democrats told members during a caucus call, but it will incorporate a version of Rep. Carolyn Maloney's Delivering for America Act, which would prohibit recent USPS uh, operational changes the Trump administration has made uh, that have slowed mail service around the country. The bill will also include Democrats' initial ask for $25 billion in funding for the Postal Service, three sources familiar with the matter told CNN. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told members the final bill is likely to come out of committee on Tuesday. What about a coronavirus release package? What about a UBI while, while half the country or more is shut down? Like, I'm not saying this Postal Service shit isn't fucking important, but there are people being kicked out of their fucking homes right now, today, as we speak, that have yeah. nowhere to go. And the first of next month, that shit is going to fucking get worse. It's going to compound every fucking month. Like, I'm all for this. Get the Make sure that the Postal Service is funded enough so that people can mail in their ballots safely and shit. But um, don't you think that you ought to be... Like, the fact that you guys went on vacation, you went on break with no answer for the people who were going to be hitting the streets, no extension to the federal moratorium on evictions, no fucking UBI, temporary or otherwise, for the for coronavirus relief. No medical option for people who are uninsured and come down with this shit. The fact that you were going on fucking vacation with all of that shit on the table during a pandemic where we've got over 5 million cases and 170,000 dead is fucking ludicrous. Fuck these people. You know why? Because think about this. The Republican (laughs) side, and this is what Democrats will say. Well, look. Nancy Pelosi said we wanted a three billion dollar, uh, not three billion, three trillion dollar package. The Republicans wanted a one trillion. We said let's compromise, let's meet in the middle, let's do two trillion. But honestly, the Democrats don't see any incentive to compromise because if the country just gets worse, that plays in their hand. Oh, the narrative. Look how th- Trump's ruined everything. Right. The post office thing is just an acknowledgement of hey, more liberals vote by, are going to want to vote by mail. Yeah, I mean, this. I mean, like, it's the only reason is they're not fucking fighting for the post office out of like some great 
No. Wow, the post office. It's a political is, move. Like, they know, like, hey, we... The post well, office you want to know why? Because they want Republicans on record having to vote against the post office, which is one of the most popular federal uh, uh, programs that exists. I mean, it's quasi-federal because, I mean, it has, it, that's why it has a, it's a corporation in a sense, but it's quasi. Right. It's, it's subsidized by the federal government and always has been. Subsidized. Well, and it's regulated by the federal right. government, too. They can't raise rates without, without Cong- uh, congressional approval, I believe. But the thing is, is that they, they just want Republicans on record having to say, if they have a bill that just says, hey, let's get money to the post office, they want those Republicans to go, no. And by the way, this $25 billion, and I'm once again, I'm not trying to undercut it. It would probably help and it would probably ensure that more people could get their ballots in without bullshit. But this $25 billion that they're proposing floating to the post office is not going to make it solvent. This is a can kicking move. The post office has been dying since 2007 just before Barack Obama was elected and got infinitely worse underneath uh, Barack Obama's eight years as president and has been underwater since. So this $25 billion is going to raise that bar maybe up to close to the median again, but it's not going to change any functionality that led to the slow rot of the fucking postal service. The postal service needs to be federalized. This quasi corporation That has to remain solvent on its own and has to fund itself with you go on the post. Have you guys ever been to the post office website? Like to do some to do something other than check a package. Yes. You know, they have this insane um, long list of fucking merch that they sell with post office logos and shit on it that I can't imagine a single fucking human being in the history of history. They're desperate. This the, the entire post office the entire united states postal service needs to be federalized and funded and this dream of it funding itself with the sale of fucking coffee mugs with the usps logo and stamps needs to be ended period so this is a can kicking move at best and it's ignoring 15 other wildfire issues that are currently burning out of control in this fucking country Uh, TJ, I don't know if you pulled this. Uh, did you pull anything about the Germany's UBI thing? No. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> well, that's something that I've heard. Uh, I don't know what they... Uh, I, I was just kind of like browsing through, but I, that's something I, I thought that was interesting. Germany is actually going to test out a UBI, and I don't know how, how large it is on what basis, but I think, I think it's supposed to be like $1,400 a month to people. So it's like... I didn't see a story about it, but... Uh... I can pull one real quick if you want. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So we're talking about that, and it's like, you know... The post office, and I completely agree with you, Paul. You've got to fucking federally fund this thing. It doesn't need to be this weird fucking sort of like shambling zombie thing. Like, look, so many people rely on this shit for mail. People in rural areas, people who need life-saving medication. There's too many fucking people that need this to fucking have this thing be in limbo. This needs to be a fucking thing like, like, like any other part of the government's run. It has a budget. It's funded. People get their mail. People get the shit they need. Everyone fucking benefits from it. It doesn't make any sense to not have it. The only, people that, the only companies that don't want this are FedEx and UPS and these other private fucking delivery services. That's it. That's the only people that are probably sitting back going, no, let it fail, please. So you know, all, that have all those things for the same cost. So we're going to end up going to fucking spending more money. It doesn't make sense. So uh, here's the story you wanted. Uh, Germany got univer- got a universal basic income and nobody noticed. Uh, paradigm shift as Supreme Court caps job center penalties, uh, effectively removing the legal requirements to seek employment. Germany just got itself a universal basic income through the back door. Uh, we'll never Ooh, know. Through the back door. Yeah. yeah. That was one of those kind of deals. Just that I like it. Uh. We'll never know if any of the judges at the German Supreme Court in Karlsruhe were aware of the enormous consequences of the recent verdict. Probably not, because what they ruled on, at least officially, was not the question. Should there be a universal uh, basic income? Yes or no. What they had to decide on the fateful rainy November Wednesday was simply the legality of an administrative regulation concerning uh, possible penalties. uh, Hearts for benefit recipients can incur. Uh, for failing to comply with their legal obligations to do everything within reason to end or reduce their dependency. Um, so basically this is kind of like Germans, Germany's unemployment, I guess. I'm right. Guessing. So, I'm so guessing. from, from they're, they're basically like they were like, they, they've basically ruled that like, you no longer have a benefit. You don't, you no longer have like an impetus to be like out there looking for work. So we have that here and it's actually pretty common that if you're on, 
uh, uh, job seeking benefit of any kind, that there is a legal requirement for you to be actively seeking work. And uh, when I used to run Starbucks, I used to get these people all the time that would come in and you could tell they didn't really want the job. You know what I mean? They would fill out this hastily thing and they'd, they'd say, hey, can you sign this thing saying that I applied here? And that was basically so that they could show that they had applied for X amount of jobs. Right. Um, and this is basically um, Germany saying you don't have to do that. You don't have you're no there's no longer a requirement for you to run around and be actively seeking work. You're going to get this unemployment benefit no matter what, which basically is a UBI. It means that if you lose your job, you're fine it, or not fine, but you have a safety net there. You know, well, back up, you, you, you kind of glossed over the thing, how much people are going to get. OK, so basically, they're going to give people around eleven hundred twenty euros a month. Uh, food allowance, you're going to get three hundred euros. Uh, the center allowance for food and other daily necessities is set at four hundred twenty four euros which assuming a 30% deduction will be reduced to around 300 euros per month. A young, healthy person will find it possible with some careful plan to fill their plate with that amount. Uh, housing costs 500 euros. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, like, this isn't an uh, amount of money where it's like, hey, this is going to make you, you're living high on the fucking hog, but it's so you can survive. It's a safety net. It, make, it makes yeah. sure that if you lose your job and you can't find another one, that you're not living on the street or in a shelter or in a lean-to somewhere underneath a bridge, well, like happens here so often and like is happening, by the way, right, right now. It is not perfect, but you can tell like this gives you an idea of how complex uh, a UBI has to be. Because as you can see, uh, if you go back up, TJ, they... The, these numbers are going to vary based on where a person resides. So you need 700 euros a month to pay a basic housing cost in Munich. And you need uh, 300 euros a month to pay it in rural areas, which means that, you know, people are going to get different uh, amounts of money based on their need, which is a smart way to keep costs low on something like this uh, as a taxpayer burden. You know what I mean? Like giving everybody one lump sum of money, is a nice idea, but that money doesn't go as far in New York city as it does in rural Oklahoma. So this idea that a UBI should be a straight benefit of X amount of dollars a month, probably not the best way to do it. It should probably be a case by case basis. You're given a certain amount of money based on the region that you're in, based on what the cost of living in your area and the cost of food is. So it's an interesting thing that, yeah, I mean, basically slipped under the radar. So this is, um, my question is, do they, uh, like, no, people with jobs can't get this, though, right? No, no. I mean, it's it's an unemployment benefit. Right. So it's not really universal. But people with jobs in, in Germany don't need this. Yeah. It, it, it's universal in the fact that if you, like, if you don't have a job that can support you, you get it. So, I mean, that's what we need here in the United States, too. It, we don't necessarily need to send money to people who are gainfully employed enough to make their bills and are OK. And there are people in this country that fit that criteria. Like There are people in this country that do not need a UBI. So why should they receive one, you know, until they need it? If they if they lose their job, lose their employability, they get it. You're talking about universal access. Right. Not necessarily everyone gets it no matter what. Like, hey, I'm a millionaire. Give me fucking fifteen hundred bucks a month. Right. It's like. If you lose, if you lose everything, you're not just going. Oh, should I get nothing? Right. If you need it, it's there. I like it. Um, left outraged by AOC's bit role at Democratic convention. <clears throat> uh, the fact she was given only sixty seconds to speak was taken was uh, taken as a slight by progressives. Before we get into this, yes. did you catch the? I think it was NBC News smear. Yeah, I did. I saw that. She actually tweeted against it as well. So. Uh Catch it. Just so we don't have to look it up and shit, as I understand it, she was there to uh, uh, abide by a specific rule of the DNC right? to present the nomination, um, to read the roll call of nominations um, for, for the presidential candidacy. Yes. And she seconded the nomination of Bernie Sanders from Vermont right. as a part of her role. Yeah, that, which is an official role. Which that, she had to do. You know, she, she went out yeah. there to do that. If it wasn't her, it would have been Nancy Pelosi doing it or somebody else, or somebody right? Else. Right. Yeah. So somebody was going to say these words, and it just happened to be AOC that they chose to do it, which I think was a good choice since she right. was part of his movement. Mm -hmm. So not only that, but they smeared by saying she also gave the shortest speech of the night, which was completely untrue. Her speech was exactly on par with most of the speeches that were given that night and just published it in the middle of the night 
as a news story. Well, she happened to be up and fucking immediately called them on it and was like, hey, this is bullshit. Like, I, the, you guys don't understand the fundamental rules of the DNC. This is what I was brought there to, to do. And the speech that I gave was pretty much the same as the speech the person before me gave. And the piece of, you know what I mean? She, like, called them out on it. And then they, they posted this hasty retraction. <laughs> it's like. They were just trying to stir the drama pot. I mean, not, not, no, they were trying to put a stain on what is ostensibly one of the most progressive uh, fucking uh, politicians in America by making it look like she saltily worked against Joe Biden or something. She endorsed Joe Biden months ago. So this so this insinuation that she never endorsed Joe Biden is just total fucking bullshit. But anyway, they don't care. They're just, trying, they're just trying to sow the seeds of discord. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the, uh, the fact of the matter is that, um, you know, like when Barack Obama, the way he got his political fucking career started off was he gave a keynote speech at a, at the DNC when he was just like the up and coming young fucking Senator. Right. Right. You know, he basically did it for John Kerry. Yeah. Uh, and you know, he, he wasn't a national figure at that point, but they, but he, they could tell he was a rising star. And so they gave him that fucking spotlight. Um, you know, AOC much bigger star in the party at this point than, than a Barack Obama was at the time that he got to deliver that keynote speech. Um, you know, you look at polls, there was a poll out a while back about, there was just a poll of Democrats and like asking like who they wanted to see speak. Uh, at this, you know, at this thing. And uh, I think she was the number one person that people wanted to see speak. Bill Clinton was way down there. He was like, you know, there was still, I mean, I guess a significant chunk still wanted to hear their fucking traditional Bill Clinton speech. They've heard fucking every DNC for the last fucking two decades or whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, no, more, no. more people wanted to hear the AOC speech. So the fact that she only got 60 seconds. It's kind of a fucking ridiculous thing. Step because aside. even 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 main even the mainstream wing of the party is interested in what AOC is saying and doing. Step aside, you AOC. You don't have to be on the fucking the left, quote unquote, to fucking want uh, you know to hear from AOC. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that we're in a battle for the soul of this nation. The soul of this nation is on the line, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you all about it. Nope, nope, nope. Shut up, AOC. No, no, no. People want to hear me. No, monk. <laughs> A thousand points of light, y'all. Um, In a cigarette? Clint, Clint monk, dude. Clint <laughs> <laughs> Someone, someone Photoshop skills make it happen. Clint monk. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's definitely no point in covering it. And yeah, she spoke for fucking a minute. I mean, like, it's just like they couldn't fucking spare more than that for like a rising stuff. Like, this is just like better than anything else indicates that the fucking the people with a stranglehold in this party do not want this party Dude, to move. In she doesn't years. she doesn't represent what the, what the people that control this party want the direction they want this party to fucking move in. Of course, they're going to fucking give her some procedural role and limit her from giving an actual speech. Right. But you know what? Like the thing is, nobody's watching this DNC shit anyway. I'm sorry. It's by ch- have you tuned into any of it? Yeah, I tuned in a couple times. I've I've tuned in a couple of times too and 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 uh let me give you my review. <laughs> uh, you know what uh, actually it's funny. I thought the uh I thought the traditional conventions that actually happened, you know, at a big convention center kind of thing were pretty dull, but I I mean no at least though at least uh, it could be at the very least, those had a fucking hint of energy about them. You know, this is just like, oh, no, you know, yeah, who's up next? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But as interesting as the YouTube rewind. I'll tell you what ended up happening, TJ. Uh, me and Taylor, I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch the Bernie speech from it. That was like a clip online. And then uh, other things, we were in our bedroom. Other things ended up happening. And then, like, the end of it, I was like, that was the best speech Bernie ever gave. Let me tell you. Damn, God, Scotty God, fucks. I, was I didn't know Bernie's speeches were like aphrodisiac. Scotty you know? fucks, <laughs> dude. Well I, 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 well, I wasn't really focused on the speech, to be honest. Yeah, Bernie Sanders pops up. He's like, listen, I'm Bernie Sanders. I'm like, all right, baby, let's get it on. You play Bernie's speech backwards. It's like, give him head. Give him head. You know, it's like, whatever the fuck. Uh, good so I, what I can tell you guys is the DNC shit is on point. 
<laughs> now, don't take my word for it because I didn't barely half listen and I got laid when it was going on. But if, if you do that, you'll enjoy the DNC fucking speech or whatever the fucking shit's going on at the convention. If you're not doing that, I don't recommend it. This country uh, desperately needs to fuck the tight pussy of reform. <laughs> uh, poor, poor AOC, dude. Can't catch a fucking break. She's doing just fine. Like, honestly, their attempts to scuttle her just make her more important. Like, they just put her more in the spotlight. They, they, it shows that she's feared on both sides of the aisles and makes her more popular with the people that like her. Like, they're just helping her. They're making her more politically viable. The more that they obstruct her, the more that they stand in her way, the more she shows that she's got the fucking political acumen to rise above it and just make a tweet that dismantles the whole fucking bullshit narrative. She's doing fine. Uh, I'm, I'm glad for that, dude. I'm, I'm just, I'm just the fucking. I'm not even talking about. <laughs> I don't want them to embrace her for her sake. I want them to embrace her for their sake. But sure. they're obviously too stupid to unfuck themselves. So yeah, well, agreed. We agree on that point. Uh, um. So final. Uh, I think this is the final story I pulled on this uh, shit. And by the way, this is probably the final pleb story as well. And look, I'm gonna be trying to not be nicer to the plebs. Why? Some of them are getting upset. So try, that's the point. They should be upset. I want to try the soft approach. I'll try the general approach, guys. The velvet glove. Yeah. Listen, guys. <laughs> don't you? Doesn't it suck? You can't see the next half of the show. Darn. Hey, you know what you got to do? Just join the Patreon. It's it's reasonably priced, man. It sure is. Five dollars a month. You could see the other half of all these shows. And you would be hard pressed. Why are, you, to, why are you settling for a world where you only get half of the flash fried goodness that yeah. you deserve? You're sure. better than this. Become a patron. All right. Anyway, this is your last story. Um, Jason Riley. I don't care who that is. Which version of Kamala Harris will we see speak on night three of DNC? I don't really care about this story. I just want us to ask, I want us just us to ask, answer the question for ourselves. What what Kamala Harris are you going to see? So we we've seen a number of Kamalas early on in the debate season. I remember Kamala Harris actually being a pretty kind of a, like a like a firebrand almost. Like she was out there scoring points, making having oh moments, you know, ooh moments during the debate. Uh, yeah, uh, throwing some sick burns. She had a lot of energy about her. And about, I'd say, by the time we were halfway through this slog of debate season, we saw a new Kamala Harris who was listless, energyless, um, rudderless, rambling, uh, advocating for silly things like trying to get t- Trump blocked off of Twitter at a time when the country was burning. <laughs> um, and we saw kind of a slow decline. So we know that there's a gradient between high energy, high energy totally engaged Kamala, and completely checked out. I'm not going to win anyway. Who fucking cares, Kamala? Um, <laughs> so which one are we going to get? Uh, I think at first we're going to get that high energy, high energy Kamala. I think if the polls tighten in any significant way, which it's already, by the way, showing that they are. A lot of polls are starting to tighten between uh, Biden and uh, Trump. I've even seen quite a few within the margin of error. So it's a, it's a horse race at this point pretty much neck and neck and we got three months to go. And I think that if that trend continues, Kamala's energy is going to slowly, but surely bleed from her. And by the time we're about two weeks out from the election, we're going to be getting this listless fucking, uh, uh, lecturing, boring Kamala Harris. Um, and that, that's my, that's, that's my, uh, take on it. At least that's what I think we're going to get right now. Uh, looking at real clear politics, uh, we're having about Biden is up about seven points. It ranges from four points to CNN. Uh, Rasmussen, which is obviously more like a conservative one, has Biden up four. Yeah, How, what's mean, the margin of error on those polls? Plus or minus four? Well, I'm not sure what the margin of error. Oh, margin of error on some of them. Let's see. Rasmussen is two. Yeah. CNN or well, that's within the margin of error. Uh, now, a lot of people are trying to argue the CNN poll that shows them close is more of an outlier. Sure. I don't necessarily believe I mean, Who knows? It's yet. I mean, it could be a fucking backlash to picking her as his running mate. Cause like, I'm, look, you're saying too, the I'm LA Times come out after that. LA Times, uh, in the 2016 had them, uh, Hillary and Trump even, and that was about the closest call that anyone made. And that was an outlier poll. That was considered to be a shitty poll. I remember the left attacked it and said, like, why does the L.A. Times want to help Trump? This is a bullshit poll yeah. skewed numbers. And they ended up being right. 
I'm not dismissing anything at this point, nor should I think anyone else. No. I mean, look, who we have in office right now. The concerning thing, if you're if you're going for fucking um, like if you're if you're hoping the Democrats win the night, if you're looking at the 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 CNN poll, the more disconcerting thing than the than the gap than the small gap between them in national polling is how tight they have those battleground states because they have those battleground states super tight in that same poll. Like, and you know, obviously this is barring some huge event between now and then. I think more than likely Biden will win, but I think it'll be way fucking closer than people are thinking. I think a lot of people are thinking like it's going to be like Biden's going to come in and fucking it's going to be like a Reagan. It's going to be a, this blue wave. Like the Democrats are honestly in a better position to, to, for the Senate than they are on, on, on the national level. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's going to be a tight race either way. Anyone that thinks this is going to be just like a blowout. I mean, may, may, look, if it was popular vote, sure, it, it probably would be a blow in that respect. But as far as the way the electoral college is set up, I mean, like, there's a lot of battlegrounds. Say it's like Arizona. Where is that going to go? We don't know. I mean, Florida. We don't know what that's going to happen with Florida. Ohio. Ohio used to be a purple state, but it's leaning a lot more red. So that's not. I think that's kind of taken out of as a battleground. Michigan. Is Trump going to be able to win Michigan again? Is he going to be able to convince enough people? A lot of people are saying, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no way Trump can't win Michigan. We don't know. I'm really expecting Kamala Harris's speech to just be almost entirely an attack against Trump. Well, yeah, I mean, because that's what that's be, what Biden's be speech is going to be too. She's going to be in attack dog mode. Um, it's really I, the question is: Is, is Trump going to die the death of a thousand cuts? Is that's what? Cause I mean, that, that's I think that's obviously the strategy at this point. It's been the DNC and the Democratic strategy since day one. It's just can Trump fucking suffer? I mean, that was their strategy Trump back in fucking um, the last election cycle, and it's the same fucking strategy this time. The, uh, the her speech is going to be all about how dangerous Trump is. Uh, fucking so is Biden's. Like let's let's not get it twisted here. That's the Democratic Party platform. Trump bad. We good. I think Biden is going to be a little bit more positive with his spin. I think he's going to be a little bit more like, you know, she, she's going to paint the picture of like the the nightmare, and then Biden's going to fucking come up and be like, look, I can restore order and normalcy and all this other stuff. But it's not. That's that's the problem. There's no real vision. For this fucking you know, the vision is basically like let's go back to where we was before. Trump. Let's go back pre-COVID. That's it. It's, it's not let's let's make America like greater in the, a true sense of like blue MAGA, dude. It's just blue MAGA. <laughs> make America great in blue edition. Oh yeah, it's like like it's like when Bernie made his speech. One of the things I do remember is like we will lower the age of Medicare eligibility to sixty, and it was like. Woo, I'm glad millions of more people are covered. I'm never going to argue against what, what more less people having health care. I'll never do it. But the thing is, that's not what we fucking need. We need fucking health care from everyone from the time they're born until the time they die, because everyone at some point is going to use the health care system. Yes, I prefer people to be healthy. I'm sure everyone prefers people are going to be healthy, but it's not fucking reality. We all we're all ticking time bombs here, people. <laughs> all right, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for uh, tuning in to this pleb half, but uh, I gotta say, plebs, get out. Get out. Oh, it breaks my heart to say it, but plebs, get out. Look, it's getting late, plebs. Oh, I feel, oh, I'm feel tired. tired. Uh, I beg, I'm, I'm asking you nice. Usually I'm mean about it, but you know, I'm trying a softer approach because you're not hurting me by not becoming yeah, a patron. Hurting you're hurting too. yourself by not becoming a patron. Let's just be honest. Right. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I'm so happy Cause today I subscribe On Patreon I'm so happy Cause today